Welcome to the Be Your Own Superhero Women's Leadership Conference, inspiring the superhero in you. Welcome to episode two. We feature Lisa Caracato from the Canadian Mental Health Association. Lisa will be speaking about managing stress and your mental health. Thank you very much for having me here today and thank you for organizing this uh, wonderful event. It's so nice to see a room full of strong women who are like-minded um, and really you are a prime example of what one person can do. And a lot of times people will say things like that, well how can I make a difference? I'm only one person, what can I do? And you took your struggles and um, the things that you went through and you use them to motivate you and to bring this group together today and to share that very personal uh, story and background. So um, I want to thank you for doing that and for giving everyone example of what it really means to have the strength and courage to kind of share struggles because we all go through struggles, right? We all have times in our lives where we go through struggles. And I'm going to talk to you today about mental health and about stress. With mental health and mental illness, um, it's, it's a very difficult topic often for people to speak about because uh, there's a lot of shame and stigma around it. <laughs> there's a lot of shame and stigma around it. But we know that in Canada, um, about 20% of Canadians are living with a mental disorder, a uh, diagnosable mental disorder of some kind. And so that's 20% of our population, and that's what's reported. But two-thirds of the people who are living with these mental health problems or illnesses don't report it because of the shame and stigma. And the way that we can help reduce that shame and stigma is by using Catherine as example, by, by sharing our stories, by telling people that it's common to struggle with your mental health, that everyone at some point in their life struggles with their mental health, and that by sharing these stories, we can help reduce that stigma. We can use our, our, our strength and our courage as examples for everyone. So thank you so much for having me here and for doing that. Um, before I get started, I would like everyone to take their glass, pour some water, or if you have some coffee, I'll give you a moment to do that. Um, so everyone pour yourself a glass of water or grab your coffee that you have in your hand. And I'm going to ask you to hold it out in front of you with your arms stretched out. And I'm going to ask you a question about that. But, oh, wait a minute. Before I do, I forgot to tell you about myself. Everybody wants to hear about me, right? Because I'm up here. <laughs> so my name's Lisa. I've worked in the mental health field for about, well, over 20 years now. And I started when I was about four, so just so you know. <laughs> um, and uh, throughout my time working uh, in mental health, I've worked with adults living with uh, serious and persistent mental illness. I've worked with families. Um, people aren't holding their glasses up. You have to hold your glasses up. <laughs> uh, I've worked with their families, providing support, education, information to them. Um, lots of different things in my capacity there. And. Um, Throughout my time there, I uh, really, really enjoyed working with people and kind of learning a lot from their strength and, and resilience. The last few years, I have started working full-time as the mental health educator. I spend three days a week at the agency and two days a week at Sioux College in the mental health hub there. So I get to work with young people and hear their stories and experiences. Um, I do lots of different trainings and if anyone's interested you can talk to me um, at some point today. I teach mental health first aid, applied suicide intervention skills training, uh, safe talk, all those kinds of things. So um, lots of experience working with mental health. Now, I bet you guys are wondering what I'm asking you, what the question is I'm going to ask you about these glasses that you're holding in front of you. <laughs> so did any of you think I was going to ask you how full the glasses were? Some people might have thought that. I heard someone else say how heavy it gets. And that's exactly my point. Now when you first held up the glass, it wasn't hard, right? You held up the glass and it was okay. But the longer you've held out that glass, your arm starts to get sore. Eh? And if I asked you to continue to hold it for the rest of my presentation, would you be able to do it? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, I'm going to ask everyone, put your glass down. 
And that's really a simple reminder and analogy for our lives. Stress, worries are like holding that glass of water. If you pick it up and hold it for a moment, no problem, everyone can do it, right? But if you continue to hold it, and you held it for a couple of minutes, so that's great, I'm glad a lot of you did and you didn't put your glass down. Um, your, your arm starts to get really sore and heavy, right? And it starts to become difficult to hold it. Now, again, if I asked you to hold it for my entire presentation, which is gonna be about a half an hour, you wouldn't be able to do that. Your arm would get really tired, really sore, and you'd have to put it down. So worries, stresses are like that glass. We have to remember that. If we think about worries for a short time, they're manageable. But if we continue to think about them, stress about them, think about them for hours and days, it becomes un unmanageable. You become paralyzed. So we all have to remember to put the glass down, okay? So I'm gonna to talk to you about stress and mental health. They go hand in hand, right? And first of all, I wanna talk about mental health. Now, mental health, um, people for a long time were under the misunderstanding that mental health and mental illness are the same thing. Sometimes you hear people say, well, mental health, I don't have to worry about that, I don't have that, so I don't have to worry about it or talk about it. But that's not true. Mental health is something that we all have, just like we have physical health, and you can't separate the two. They go hand in hand. So it's really important to remember that and to remember that we need to take care of our mental health. So what mental health really is, is having a balance in all aspects of our life. Mental, spiritual, physical, financial, all those things, right? And it's a learning process. And at any given point in time, some people might not be in balance, and that's okay, that's part of the human experience. But it's getting back to finding that balance that really is important uh, to maintaining your mental health. So I'm going to show you a picture of the mental health continuum model that's from the Mental Health Commission of Canada. And this really says very nicely and explains very nicely um, how our mental health works. It's on a continuum. And if you look at the first section, the green section, now not all of you will be able to read it because it's not that big and some of you are far away. I'm not gonna read the whole slide, but I'm gonna give you some examples. So in the healthy range of the continuum, our moods go up and down. We're able to sleep, um, we're physically well, we have energy, we um, are socially active, we're able to you know, do well at our jobs, at school, that kind of thing, right? So in that range of the continuum, we really want to make sure that we're doing all those things to maintain that healthy section. Now we're coming on the yellow part, which is reacting. And that's called life. That's called um, being human. We all have situations in our life that come up that we react to. And that's part of being human. So in this part of the continuum, you may be a little bit more nervous. Um, maybe a bit more irritable, maybe having some problems sleeping, or procrastinating. <laughs> um, those types of things. So in this area of the continuum, really it's important to recognize your limits, to try to get some sleep and eat healthy, um, engage in some healthy coping strategies, and try to identify and minimize your stressors. So in those two areas of the continuum, Really, what we see is people who are able to have good mental health and who are reacting to life but can stay in that healthy range of the continuum. And in those two areas, usually, if we do the things we need to do to take care of ourselves, um, then we can stay in that healthy range. Now, moving over to the injured section, uh, the orange section, um, this is where we start to see more and more problems in everyday life. People are angry or sad more often than not. Um, they're starting to have trouble with sleep. Um, they're starting to avoid social situations, maybe not call, return phone calls from their friends, that kind of thing. And in this area of the continuum, it's really important to identify um, some of those signs of distress and, and, and to talk to someone about it. Um, and then moving over into the ill part. Really, this is, um, 
people are experiencing problems that are impacting their ability to live their life day to day, to do the things that are important to them. So it's really having uh, an impact on relationships, on their ability to do work, um, go to school, really some symptoms that are causing health problems as well. So in the last two sections, the injured and the ill part of the continuum, that's really where we suggest that people need to get some professional help. Um, and that's, uh, you know, making an appointment with your family doctor, making an appointment with your nurse practitioner, uh, with a counselor, that kind of thing, um, to seek some professional help. Now, I really want to show this because it's a really good graphic image to really display that um, at any point in time, anyone can be anywhere on this continuum. And just because I don't have a diagnosed mental disorder, that doesn't mean that I have really good mental health or really poor mental health. I could have a diagnosed mental disorder and I could have very good mental health. I could be doing all the things I need to do to take care of myself, um, you know, going to my counseling sessions, exercising, um, maybe taking medication if I need to, and I could have really good mental health. And so the same thing can be said, if I don't have a mental disorder, it doesn't mean I have good mental health, right? <laughs> so it's really important to understand that um, at any point in time, anywhere can be, uh, anyone can be on the continuum, okay? Um, it's, not a, it's not a linear process. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about stress now for a moment. And um, the idea of stress, everyone calls, I've done lots of lunch and learns, um, for SR Steel, for Tenaris, um, Brookfield Power, like lots of places are having me come in now to do education around mental health and stress. And people are kind of, I think, under the misunderstanding that stress is a really bad thing. That we should avoid stress at all costs. How many people have been told that? Like, stress is bad for you, it can cause lots of health problems and you should try to avoid stress at all costs. A lot of people are told that, right? Well, you, what you've been told is wrong. Because stress is not always a bad thing. In fact, it can be very good for us. What are some ways that stress can be good for us? Yeah, it could tell you to stop procrastinating. How else can stress be good for us? Yeah. It gives you adrenaline, right. For people who compete, athletes, or if you're competing in a game, um, before that game or before that uh, competition, your, your adrenaline's going, right? And adrenaline is a stress hormone. So it can motivate you. It can push you forward. Another way it can be good for you is that if you're feeling overwhelming amounts of stress, that's your body's way of telling you to pay attention. It's your fight or flight response. So if I'm walking down, um, down the street from work, I'm on Queen Street, and I'm going to cross the road, and I'm at a light, and I step down off the curb, and a car pulls in front of me, and I jump out of the way, that's my fight or flight response. That's my anxiety or stress response telling me, get out of the way, there's danger. So that protects us. So like I said, if you're feeling overwhelming amounts of stress or anxiety, that's your body's way of saying, pay attention, you need to take care of something. Now I want to kind of liken this to a physical thing because I think that's sometimes the way people can make that connection. If you wake up in the morning and you have a pain in your side, what would most people do? And I'm using this example because this happened to me. So I think like I'm like most people and I took some Advil and went to work. <laughs> Uh, went to work and my pain was still there, so at lunchtime, I took some more Advil. <laughs> um, came home from work, started to make supper, and the pain got worse. So then by that point, I went down to the hospital. So most people would say right away they'd go to the hospital, or some, some people might say they would do what I did. But at some point, if that pain gets worse, that's your body's way of saying, pay attention to me, something's going on, you got to get looked at, right? And would anyone make me feel ashamed or embarrassed for going to the hospital because I had a pain in my side? Never. That's what we have to do, right? And we're taught that from a very young age. That as children, if we hurt ourselves in any way, we need to tell an adult, we need to tell our parents because we need to go to the doctor and get that looked at to prevent something from becoming worse. 
But we aren't taught that about our mental health. We aren't taught that as children. That if something is bothering us or impacting our lives in a way that it's stopping us from doing things that are important to us, get some help. We're not taught that. And I don't understand why. Um, because that's what stress and anxiety does to you. It, it can do some things to you that prevent you from doing the things that are important. And if things get to that point, there should be no shame in talking to someone about it and getting some help. So when we talk about understanding stress, there are some basic things. So um, just everyday worries in life, getting married, changing jobs, those kinds of things. Um, I have some slides up here for people who like to read. I'm, I'm going to try not to read them, but I'll go through some of them because I know everyone can't see them at the back. Um, some long-term worries, like concerning, uh, concerned about your children's future, or maybe some financial problems that might be coming up, that kind of thing, or ongoing illness, whether it's you or your family. Um, daily hassles, traffic jams, rude people. No one puts up with that, right? There's no rude people in Sault Ste. Marie. There's no bad drivers in Sault Ste. Marie, right? <laughs> um, things that just don't work the way you want them to. So those are some general examples of some, some daily stressors. Now, workplace stress. Anybody have workplace stress? <laughs> I think every day at some point we have some stress in the workplace, right? But it really can affect your productivity, and it can affect your physical and emotional health. And it's not about making big changes um, or changing your job or what you do, but it's about changing the things that you can control, and that's you. So we're going to look at how we can do that. Um, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. And that's really important to remember when we're talking about stress and anxiety. That we have the power and the control around stress and anxiety. Now before I get into a little bit more, I want to talk about some studies that have started to go on around stress and anxiety. Because remember I mentioned stress and anxiety can be good for you. Uh, that's not always a bad thing. Um, so when you're feeling stress about a situation, um, you're releasing, someone mentioned adrenaline, and that is a hormone that you're releasing when you're stressed. That's a stress hormone. Um, but there's also another hormone that you're releasing when you're stressed, and it's called oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is a stress hormone, but it also is nicknamed the cuddle hormone. So your stress response has a built-in mechanism that um, has, promotes you to seek comfort in the people that you, um, that you are close to. So it promotes you. So when you're hugging someone or close to someone, oxytocin is also released. So it has some built-in resilience for you, your stress response. And more and more, the studies that they're doing are beginning to tell us that it's not stress, all these negative things that are going to happen to you from stress, that's not going to harm you. It's how you view stress that's going to um, predict whether you'll have a lot of the negative um, consequences. And if you view stress in a way that, um, that kind of shows you that this is your body responding to a situation, this is your fight or flight response, this is my body's way of saying pay attention, I need to take care of things, then you won't have a lot of those negative impacts that stress might have. So really important thing to remember about that and about how our thoughts work. So now having said that, some signs and symptoms if you have um, over an overwhelming amount of stress in the workplace. So uh, feeling anxious, irritable or depressed, loss of interest, apathy, problem sleeping, fatigue, trouble concentrating, muscle, muscle tension, stomach problems, social withdrawal, loss of sex drive, using alcohol or drugs to cope. So those are some things that could happen if you're starting to get overwhelming amounts of stress going on. So how can we reduce stress? Well, I want to also thank Peggy, who spoke before me, um, because she really talked about the importance of self-care, taking care of ourselves. It's not selfish to take care of yourselves. We need to do that every single day. Because if we don't, how can we be expected to take care of other people and other things? So it's really important to remember that, um, that we need to take care of ourselves. We need to um, practice some things that will help us be resilient when it comes to stress. Um, and so some of the things we can do in our workday is to try to create a balanced schedule. 
So look at your schedule, look at your responsibilities, your tasks, um, and make sure that you're taking time for breaks. Whether it's getting up and walking away from your desk for a few moments, whether it's having lunch with a friend. Um, if you spend all day at your desk working, not moving, that's not good for you. You need to make sure you're doing that, building it into your day. Um, finding a balance between your work, your family life, your social activities, all those things are very important. Um, again, it's part of maintaining your mental health. Don't overcommit yourself. And I, I, <laughs> I'm in a group uh, full of women who most, I think, are moms, and we all are try to be superheroes and try to be all and everything to everyone and do everything. Um, we can't. So recognize your limits. Don't overcommit yourselves. Know that it's okay to say no, and know that you need to say no sometimes so that you're going to be okay. You don't have to do everything. Um, drop the tasks that aren't truly necessary. Like Peggy was talking about, some things are just not important in the grand scheme of things. So don't do them. Do the things, concentrate on things that are important. Try to leave earlier in the morning. I have to, I really have to talk to my coworkers about this. <laughs> our, our office hours are 8.30 to 4.30, but it, it's a joke because most of my coworkers, like it's 8.30ish. Most of them roll in around 22, quarter to. Um, <laughs> if you leave at least 10 minutes earlier, you don't feel so rushed. You don't feel like you have to get into work and start work right away. I do this. I'm a morning person. I wish I could start work earlier, but I'm there a bit early. I have my coffee at my desk. I take time to look through my email. I chat with some of my coworkers before we're supposed to start. It's a nice way, if you can, to be able to do that. Take 10 minutes for yourself. Go a bit early. Um, listen to the music in the car that you enjoy or the radio show that you like. Um, that time uh, really can help start you off in a really better way. Prioritize your tasks, make a list of things you have to do, do them in order of importance. Um, that's really important. Break your projects down into small steps. So sometimes it seems overwhelming um, when you have a big project, but if you break it down into steps, uh, it can be more manageable. Plan regular breaks, really important. Really important if you have a desk job. Get up, walk around, it's not good for you to sit all day. Um, be willing to compromise. When you um, ask someone to contribute differently um, to a task, maybe revise the deadline or change the if you're if you're if you're changing behavior at work, you should be willing to do the same thing too. If you're asking someone else to be flexible, um, if you can both bend a little, you'll have a, a, a kind of a middle ground, and it'll reduce stress for everyone. Delegate responsibility. Again, we don't have to be superheroes every day of our life. We don't have to do it all on our own. Delegate. Find other people to do things. It'll make your life a bit easier. Uh, take care of you. I can't stress the importance enough of doing the things in your life day to day that make you smile, that help you to relax. So, some things for self-care. We're all very different people. We all um, have our own idea of what it means to relax. Um, so, I'm gonna give you a few suggestions, but really, it's a personal thing, right? Um, get moving, really important. Our mental health uh, works with our physical health, and we need, to, we need to keep that moving. We need to have exercise every day in our lives, whether it's a walk, swim, whatever. Get your body moving, really important. Um, Make good food choices, getting enough sleep, having supportive people in your life, people that you can talk to, having those connections, coworkers, friends, really important. Um, and do the things that help you to relax and unwind every day. I love running. I go for a run every day. And to me, being outside in nature, um, being alone, not having anyone to talk to, people say, oh, get a treadmill. You know, when it's cold and snowy out, you can run in your house. No. Because people can get a hold of me. My kids can yell at me. Uh, my phone's going to ring. No, I don't want anyone to reach me for my 20 minutes or half an hour, right? That's how I relax. Now, my daughter, no, she would never want to run. Her biggest thing is, you know, getting, getting off the couch and going to the fridge for uh, a pop or something. Like, that's not her idea of relaxing. So, again, it has to be something that's going to be meaningful you, for you, relaxing for you. You have to do something every day that's going to help you to take care of yourself. So, before I finish, I want to give you um, a few tips on how to reduce stress immediately. Because it's something that we can do immediately. 
And there's this whole, there's a lot of talk for people who work in the field of mental health, and even for those who don't. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard about um, the idea of being mindful. It really, really works. It helps people. Now, I was going to bring some videos, but I wasn't sure what the audio video uh, scenario was like, so um, I didn't, but I'm going to read you a few things that are going to help you right now, if you're feeling some stress, to bring your stress levels down, okay? So I'd like to tell you, first of all, that there's no stressful situations, that you become stressed because of how you interpret those situations. And until you take responsibility for your feelings and how you feel, you will always be blaming everyone and being stressed out. So, stress occurs in our minds, right? That's, that's where it occurs, it occurs in our minds. And it's a symptom that's caused by a buildup of too many negative thoughts. But here's the secret, you control your mind. You determine what kind of energy and attention you pay to those thoughts. You're in charge of your thoughts, you're in control. The nature of a thought is that it's passing. It comes and it goes. But it stays and it grows depending on the energy that you give it. So how do you, um, how do you deal with stressful situations? You need to go to a quiet place. You need to be silent, uh, clear your words, clear your mind. Your mind is usually all over the place. In the past, in the future, and Peggy talked about this too. We spend a lot of time worrying about the future. We don't have control about what's gonna happen in the future. All we have is the present. So don't worry about the past or the future. Take time right now to spend in the moment, in the present. Um, bring your, bring, be present in your body, be present in the moment. Focus on your breathing. It's impossible to be stressed out if you focus on the present moment right now. Don't give a lot of credibility or authority to your thoughts. Question them. Ask yourself, are these thoughts in my mind true? Am I absolutely sure that they are true? And what would I be without these thoughts? And the answer is, you'd be free. So again, it's about being present and being mindful. If you even just take one moment every day to clear your mind of all those thoughts, um, whether it's the past, whether it's the future, and, and spend some time being in the moment and focus on your breathing um, and what's going on in that moment. Um, it really is impossible to feel stressed out if you're concentrating on your breathing. And so these are tips that I would say to clients when I used to see them. If you take an imagination vacation, thank you. <laughs> uh, if you take an imagination vacation, a lot of us uh, are too busy and can't afford to go away to a beach somewhere. Um, but close your eyes at the end of the day and go to a happy place and spend a minute or two thinking about what you're seeing, what you're hearing, how you're feeling in that happy place. And that will really help reduce your stress levels as well. So I'm getting the flags. I didn't think I would be a half an hour, but wow, magically I am. Uh, I appreciate your time. And if anyone would like more information or would like me to come to your workplace and do some workshops, I do have my business cards available. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.